Alright, and let's see. Okay, so is the main screen right now the desktop? Because I think that's... So, but it's like, is this what they're seeing? Or... So this is what they're seeing. Okay, perfect. Awesome. Alright, uh, and also, you know what, in the meantime, too, I'm gonna make a post on Reddit. Oh yeah, and I was gonna ask too, what are the rules on playing music? Because I know probably copyright's always a thing. Yeah, I keep hitting caps lock instead of A. No, don't you dare. Don't you dare. What is it? Why is that my password? Live on the balcony, yeah? yeah. Okay. Perfect. All right. Okay, we've got Zigawatt, and I believe that's pronounced Kaledar? Kaledar? Let, let's pronounce it that way. Alright, so, 
Uh, basically, what I'm going to be doing, for those of you who aren't aware, I'm going to be making a custom skin today. A lot of people want to know, how do I do it? It's really not too difficult. And the main way you want to go about it is just an aspect of taking a skin, either already made or you can make one yourself. Not too difficult as far as recolors are concerned. And we're going to edit that. And to do that, all we're going to do right now, I already have this file downloaded from Brawl Ball. This is the Travelness by Bizazarone. I not too sure how it's pronounced, but either way, uh, the base skin we're going to be using today is right here. We're going to show it right now. And basically, the goal of this whole thing is to model this specific skin after the uh, video game character Conquer the Squirrel. So, this is where we're starting right now. This is obviously Ness. It's going to look a little, weir little bit weird, and I'm going to go into pretty decent detail, so if you guys do or do not know much about editing custom skins, you're basically going to get the corporation as far as to everything you're going to need. So, basically this is what we're starting with. This is what the skin's going to look like. This is all of the animations and everything that Ness can have all on him right away. So, don't worry if it looks really weird, because most things do look really weird in, uh, in Brawl Box. So, these are all the textures, all the colorings for everything that you're going to see here and basically how we're going to start is we'll just make a new folder on the desktop you can have basically a brand new folder made for specifically custom skin stuff but i guess we'll call this custom oh geez caps lock go away we'll call this custom uh custom jose v ness so there it is and we'll just keep that there don't really need to uh touch it just yet now we're going to go back to Brawl Box. I'm going to open this up. And now the purpose of this, of me doing all this, we're going to drag and drop this in there too. Just like that. Just going to move it. Oh, hold up. Oh, it's in Brawl Box. Okay. So we're going to move the path. So we're going to shift it there. All right, so it's in the folder. So now, same exact thing. You're just going to open it up. And you only have one file right here for PCS. I'll go into the whole file system later. But as of right now, um, Switch game plan editing to make the skin editing larger. Uh, let me get Courtney on that. Give me a sec, guys. Uh, don't worry about that. Uh, okay. Alright, yeah, we'll, we'll get it sorted out real quick. Like an overlay. Yeah. Or top right or something. Okay. There we go. Alright. Okay. Okay. So, if that's better, guys, let me know real quick. Uh, anyways, so here's what we're going to be doing. So, obviously, we have uh, the skin I already showed you, made a folder, got the file there. Going to go over the file system later. And we can click here to just preview the skin, whatever. That's uh, basically what we're going to be doing. So we're going to open up the texture data now. And this is where the whole editing is going to start. So as you can see, you're going to see all these different uh, colored things. You know, this is the skin of Ness. And also, let me find the window real quick. Hitbox. Here it is. Okay. So here it is. So this is what we're going to be basing the skin off of. This is what it's going to uh, be modeled after. So as you can see, we've got the semi-blue jacket. We're going to need green shorts with a little bit of a yellow outline. And shoes, I'm going to be doing mostly yellow it seems with about a about a navy or indigo blue more so than anything and i guess we can make the undershirt orange similar to conquer so at this point i'm just kind of you want to gather ideas like how do i want to make the skin how do i want to model it after such and such or how do i want to recolor this it's all up to you you know you pretty much have the freedom to do whatever you like so 
Uh, basically, the reason I'm saying this, though, is once you get your ideas down, you figure out what you want to do. You could pull up a notepad, write them down, or just kind of do them step by step. So the reason I'm saying this, though, is like, let's see. So his jacket, his clothes, this first one right here, a lot of times um, artists of things will name them. So you got back front. So this is for some of his clothing right here. And we're just going to hit hold control E. So this is going to export the texture, which is 512 by 512. We're going to export this to the newly made folder on the desktop. So we are going to go uh, custom. So let's see. Okay. So we're going to export that there. And you can name it whatever you want, but keeping the names kind of uniform as far as what they are makes it a little bit easier. Export this again, the second file on the list, and we're just going to kind of go down the line. You can export all of them, but I don't think I'm going to need to export every single one of them. But you kind of just get to pick and choose what you want to do. So uh, let's keep going down the line. Don't need to edit his face uh, as of right now, so that can all stay. Same with his eyes and his face once again. His hair, um, might be able to edit this. Actually, we should be able to edit this just fine. Um, you can always export it just to be on the safe side. But this is basically the very first step into editing the menus. Definitely the wear. What's up? No, don't give him a cup. All right, the wear and the bat. If you want, of course, you can edit this, make the bat like purple or something, really. But, okay, so that's all we're going to be doing as far as textures. So this is what the skin looks like as of right now. As you update those textures and edit them in any way, shape, or form, uh, it gets automatically updated here as well. But like I said, I'll go over the file system a little bit later. So now that we have all of our pictures exported, uh, we are going to be using Photoshop, but you can use the free and very easy to use program paint.net. Uh, once again, it is free, so you don't have to shell out any money, pretty straightforward. But um, I would recommend paint.net if you are pretty new to this, because there's all the tools I'm going to be using here. I can also explain how to use them in paint.net. It takes like five seconds to learn. It's pretty straightforward. So, all right, so we are going to open up now all of those images that we just went through. Go to some places and oh, whoa, hold up. There it is. Okay. So we're gonna go to recent places. There it is. And here we go. We've got all five textures. So we're just gonna click this, highlight all of them, and open them all up. So once again, the purpose of this is basically all of your models and all of your skins and whatever they are in the game. It's just basically the model that you see. Uh, just edited with different items, different uh, bits of costume. That's all it's really going to be. And then from editing these textures, you're basically putting this right on top of um, putting it right on top of that model. So, anyways, uh, as they're opening up, uh, we're going to be editing these one by one, and I'm going to show you how to replace them and how to edit them, and really get that look that you're going to be going for. So, uh, now let's see here. We're going to be going. Take this. Oops. There it is. Take this. Can we drag it to the side? Oh no, we're over here. <laughs> All right, you know what? Yeah. Leave it like something like that. So, first off, we're gonna be wanting to edit a little bit of this one by one. So, there's the picture we're going off of, and let's see. Now, the other thing you can do too, and this might help you out a little bit. I do this often. Is you could take the picture. And this is where you're going to be able to see uh, animations, all that. While you have the fitness 00 highlighted, or that individual portion right there, hit Control P, and you're going to bring up the model editor. This is basically where you can see all the hurt boxes, hit boxes if you really want. You don't need to do this, of course, because we have debug mode, which is nice. But the reason I'm doing this is you're going to see, get a much better idea. Take off the bones, don't need to see those. We're going to, oops. We're gonna get a much better idea as to what this is going to look like. So, let's see. We are gonna get rid of, let's see. Oops, uh, I'm basically removing anything right now that I don't need. So let me see. It's like you can kind of go down the line, see what you need to take off, see what you don't need to take off. But right now I'm just trying to get rid of all the white. There we go, perfect. Trying to get rid of all those white splotches. So now we have a much cleaner model. And then now I'm just going to try and move the bat just because you don't really need to. This is just making it picky. Um, but by, there we go. Perfect. 
But by removing this, now we have a much cleaner model to look at, and it's pretty easy to see what's what. So now for animations, we're going to go to load, and this is where you're going to be able to get animations. We don't need to do this now, so I'll do it later. But now that we have this model, we are going to close this window. But you don't really have to worry. Uh, you can always go back and look at that. Actually, you know what? The whole reason I did that. This time here. So, whole reason for this is we're going to go back to polygon 0 and 1, I believe. So, we are going to take polygon 1, double click it, and polygon 2. So, there we go. So, now the reason I did this is this is the model here. Let me find it. Let's flip that. There we go. So, now this is the model, and all you have to do is you want to hit. Uh, let me see, where is the purple? Let's see if this works. So, you want to take a screen cap. And the reason for this is, let's see here, just say okay here. You want to take a screen cap of the image, and wow, we have a lot going on, of course. But uh, let's see, I'm going to crop this just a little bit. Oh, there it is. Okay. So, the way this one works, uh, at least on Photoshop, how this one works, you crop whatever you want and then hit enter. But if you're using paint.net, highlight whatever it is you want, and then from there, all you have to do is hit control shift X, and it will crop your image to what you're specifically trying to look at. So, now from here, we can zoom in a little bit, and there you go. You've got the skin all laid out for us, exactly what we're looking for, and it looks pretty good. So, now the reason I did this is so it's much easier to figure out what is what. Sometimes when you just see images like this, you really have no idea what you're trying to make. So uh, by doing this, it makes it a lot easier to figure out what am I editing. So now that we've got that, we're going to minimize this uh, and we can close out. And you, this is probably usually a good idea for most people. Close out the model editor because it might slow down your computer a little bit. It does sometimes require a little bit of computer power to do that, not trying to slow anything down. So anyways. This is the, once again, this is the picture we're going to be going off of. So, the shorts, we're going to see a little bit of a yellow outline, while the rest of the shorts are green. So the way we're going to want to edit this, pretty easy to do. Um, let's see here, pull it back up. Okay, so here's the texture for these shorts. So all we're going to do is, we're going to zoom in a little bit here. All we're going to do is we're going to want to select this right here, all of these little outlines. You can do it all sorts of ways, but I'm thinking of probably the best way to go about it. Go back to that image real quick. Got the zipper portion, and we do want the leg and the side. So we don't want to do this portion. This is what we want to avoid, because this is the front, and this is the back. Uh, textures are obviously have to be flat. You can't have a 3D picture, so to speak, without doing whatever weird model stuff. So these are flat. So you kind of have to interpret what is what and what exactly means whatever. So you just have to kind of figure out what texture is what. So the purpose of this is if we go back to the picture, we notice that it just goes up the side and it goes around the rim. There's nothing in the middle that's yellow uh, near his uh, groin area. So we're kind of avoiding the spot here. So what we're going to do is we're going to want to highlight all of this right here, this little ring here, this little spot here, and the side part here, and I don't think I'll do the pocket because that's not exactly what's going on in the picture. So, to do this, uh, there's a lot of different ways you can go about it, but the old-fashioned way and the fairly efficient way is to do any select tool. There's a multitude of select tools in both Paint.net and Photoshop, uh, but we're going to go with this one here. So we're just going to select that. And now, where's my shortcut list? All right, so now, now for the easy part. We're going to hit Control u And this also on uh, Paint.net is Control shift u So all we're going to do now is we're going to be editing the skin, uh, the texture, I should say, to change the color. And as you change it, it should update. So you see right there on the left, as I drag this to the left, it's going to be changing colors, all sorts of ways. So what we want is like a neon green, all right? And actually, you know what, I think I highlighted the long parts. You know what, I'm going to make this actually a lot easier on myself. 
So see, this is the color around the color we want. I guess I could just do this for test purposes. But let's see, let me compare. So we want like a, a bright, like lime neon green. So we're at about plus 38. Probably we'll go a little bit lighter. And like even out at about 32-ish. I think that looks pretty good. So we'll go with that's the color we're going to use, but for now, we're not going to specifically use this selection here. Uh, not exactly what we're looking for, because we just want the lining here uh, around these parts. So, let's see. There's also this tool. This is one that I often use. You don't want to use that often in... Uh, let's see here. You don't want to use it that often in um, Photoshop. It can be good. Oops. And, uh, but, uh, let me see. Here is my... So control D in Photoshop to deselect whatever your selection is. In pink.net, all you have to do is hit enter. Either way. Uh, but so, what we're gonna do is if we use the magic wand, it's not always the best tool to use. Uh, you can always change the uh, specific settings for the tolerance. But, let's see, let's do that right now. Ah, there it is, okay. It's up here. Uh, once you select something, you see we, we got this part here. We don't want that. So you can change the tolerance, change it to, let's say, 20. If you hit enter, let's see, change it again. And now we're on. So you can kind of shift around, use the magic wand tool. Uh, I don't always recommend that, though. Uh, there's all sorts of ways you can do selections here. But a nice way of doing it, you can kind of do it this way. I'm not too good with this wheel, so I don't know how, how good I might be with this. We're going to do a little bit of a rough. Game. Yeah, I don't know if this isn't going to work. Don't want that. So, let's see here. Yeah, so what we're trying to do now, trying to lower the tolerance even more on this. Change it to about 15, actually. We want really low tolerance here. Basically, the higher the tolerance, which one is better for skins, Pink.net or Photoshop? Uh, personally, I prefer uh, Paint.net as far as simpli simplicity goes, but Photoshop is way more extensive with certain things, so I would highly, highly, highly recommend uh, using your preference, really. It's, uh, it's all up to you, but uh, it's really whatever you want to do. Uh, we tried getting Paint.net to work on here. Don't know if that really ended up working, but uh, either way, use what you want. It's not really uh, a big deal. Um, let's see here. There it is. Alright, so you can do it all sorts of ways. This is another way. Um, just use the selection tool. We can do the section by section however you want. We can do this right here. We'll use control U. We'll do a block by block just to make it really simple. Pretty much as simple as you can get. Uh, we're going to make this 32. And there is the color. Probably want to make it more like 30. Maybe a little bit lighter of a green. Maybe even lighter than that. To 28. And that looks pretty good. So we hit OK. And there's the color change. So now I'm um, going to select another portion. And there is... You don't want to select the portion that you already selected there. So now, same exact thing. Hit Control u It's going to have the color we said 28 and hit OK. So now basically the point of this whole thing is we're going to be selecting all of this image here and we're going to be trying to make it let's see we're just going to be trying to there we go, trying to select as much as we can
All right, same thing. Control U. Want to make this once again? What was it? 28. Same thing. And you can do all sorts of minute selections here. You can do it however you want. Um, but really, the main goal is to have this whole portion here green. So, find it better. Yeah, forgive me if I'm not like super. Normally, I'm used to paint.net, so I'm not super pro. You know, not pro Photoshop. I'm saying, but uh, normally I'm a little bit more comfortable using uh, paint.net because I use that myself. So it's all up to you guys. Whatever you want to use, uh, you can use GIMP. Even I know GIMP is another good program that people enjoy using. Um, let's see. Oh, there we go. Perfect. That's exactly what. Uh, and then here's the other thing. So if you use the magic wand, you can do things like this. We're going to make a lot of different selections, and it's kind of going to expand the area just a little bit. Well, a little bit lower the tolerance before you make this next selection. Drop it to about, we'll say six. And then make another selection. I'm doing What I'm doing here is I'm holding shift and then clicking, so I can make multiple selections at once, like that. And then Try a couple different selections here. It's a good one. It's not a good one because you don't want the line in there. It's a good one. And lower the tolerance for the selection. Yeah, so we're gonna control G on that one. Tolerance is once again at four. And I think that's okay. That's alright. So as we're selecting here, the tolerance is pretty low, so the reason uh, I'm changing the tolerance is to put this back up to 10. The higher the tolerance, the higher the chance of it selecting a color nearby of similar uh, hue. So see, as I'm making the selections, um, I don't like that one, or that one. So as I'm making the selections, you're going to see a larger and larger area selected. You can do this all sorts of ways, like I said, you can use the square selection tool for very small things, which I would recommend for really small uh, edits. Uh, you can also, oops, don't want that one, or there was one along the way. selection along here. There we go. So, uh, we're going to still be doing bit by bit little, little selections like this. Once again, there are other, uh, if you're very quick at this, I know I'm not super used to Photoshop, uh, more so paint.net, but if you're very prolific, that's the word, probably not the word. Uh, if you're very used to Photoshop, this would take you like I don't know, five seconds to select what I'm selecting. Uh, I'm not super used to it, but let's see here. That may... That's a good one. And once again, we're gonna go with this. Now the thing is, I'm gonna show you every little bit of editing this skin here. So now that we've got a pretty decent sized selection here. I'm going to hit control, uh, control U, and actually, you know what, I'm going to also get to select this, uh, this upper left part. Uh, I was saying I was trying to avoid earlier, but we're going to go control U, same exact process. Uh, if you can get it all in one, oh, okay, shit. control U. So, same exact process as before, uh, changing the hue, and if I were to deselect this, you can see it's one solid green color, and I'm going to keep editing this as we go along. Uh, and then once I replace it, like I said earlier, it's going to reset in Rawbox or change as you update it. So we're going to make the tolerance 15 now. I'm going to deselect that. Alright, select that, that, that. Actually, make all these little selections here for a smaller portion. Yeah, and the thing is, once you get to, because there's a lot of blending of colors, because the original models themselves have a lot of different colors. So sometimes uh, you might have to make the tolerance really, really low. Sometimes I've had to make it as low as about like four or something. It's all dependent on the picture, and it's it's also dependent on how accurate you want to be. If you really, really want to make it look really good, some skins can take you a while to make, and that's sometimes why things will take me a while to make. 
some people are like, oh, how long is it taking you? How, how far along are you? But you can kind of see some of this process can be kind of tedious. So that's the whole purpose of uh, trying to make it look as nice as possible. Sometimes you have to put in the time to do it. Other times, if you just want to make a quick edit, like change all of one portion, it takes you a matter of, I don't know, five minutes. Like some, some are more complicated. This one's... This one might be a little bit more complicated, but let's see here. We don't want that. Captain Falcon. And we're trying to avoid. Let's see here. Oops. There we go. Let's okay, so see. This one's. I have to make this tolerance super low here because we're really trying to avoid that zipper portion. And since the colors kind of blend together a lot, it might be a little bit difficult, but it's super doable. And like I said, you can be picky like how I am, and this is why, uh, at least in my opinion, this is why. But uh, I feel one of the reasons people enjoy like the PR skins that I do make, it's because of how... I guess clean they are, because a lot of times what I'm doing is tedious, to say the least, but the outcome looks really good, at least I feel it does not Those that I've made their skins for felt that it looks pretty solid, so uh, you can be as picky as you'd like, you, can, you don't have to be as neat as I am with this, it's all up to you, but what I will say is the more time you put into it, you're going <laughs> to... You're going to like it a lot more, because originally, when you start off, it might look like how you want, it might not look how you want, it's just a matter of taking the time for it. But we're going to do this little section here, same thing, we're going to make this 28, same exact thing. And move further away, that's what it's going to look like, so you deselect that, and we got a pretty good outline here, might do a little bit of touch up right there. Now we're going to do here, we still have to do about three other parts, this is just for the shorts alone. The rest of the stuff should go fairly quickly, but I do remember, at least from past texture stuff I've done, shorts on both the fire, both of the uh, franchise, uh, mother characters. Yeah, mother. Both both of the mother characters, their short textures are usually like one color, so it can be pretty hard to edit them, just because of the fact that they're all like almost one solid color, so it can be a little bit difficult, but. So we've got the green, uh, we're just trying to keep this yellow everywhere else, which is fine. So, actually, what is I, oh wow, actually pockets, yeah, I'm being overly picky. Man, this is a way easier skin than I thought it was. So, uh, we're going to actually zoom in here because the pockets themselves on that picture are not in fact, are not in fact green, so you know, we're going to not want that selection. We're going to want to go right here, keep it all uniform. Go up to about there. And yeah, we're going to keep going here. I've got... How much time do I have left? About an hour and a half. Hour, hour 19. I should be okay. Because this is honestly the most tedious part, I'm not going to lie. This is definitely the part that's probably going to take me the longest. Uh, I'm going to show you every aspect. Making the pictures uh, usually takes me the longest. I might have to be brief with that. But that part's really not too difficult. There's multiple ways of going about it. Uh, easiest way, though, that I would say is continually use Photoshop as well for that portion. All you're going to want to do is go to Brawl Ball or just Google it. Either, either way, you should be fine. But Google SJS, he uh, makes incredible um, CSPs, which are the portraits that you see in game whenever you're like selecting a character or you see them on the results screen. Um, basically look up his name. Oh, geez. If you want to look up his name, uh, look up his name, uh, just Google SJS, one word, just those three letters, CFB. You're going to use Photoshop or Paint.net and just edit them because his are so good that if you just edit the CSPs alone, they're really good. Or you can do the little bit, uh, not so much complicated, but more tedious aspect. It might be more tedious, but guaranteed it's going to look ten times better. Look up Theta's uh, tutorial on YouTube. Theta, of course, one of the uh, 
one of the members of the ex-dev team. Very, very, very good at what he does. He made the Dreamland. He's made multiple skins. Um, look, all of his stuff is looking really on par. So, all right. So we got this first tap done here. And actually, you know, I'm just going to do this little portion. Here. We still want this outline. That's the goal. We want to keep this part intact. And so here's the thing. While I'm doing this live, uh, I feel like I'm slowly going to get better at Photoshop because I usually just focus on using paint.net personally that's just my preference just because it's uh, generally easier to use especially if you're new to like editing software um, he's overall just got a lot of great things or it's got a lot of great things that it, uh, it can do Super fantastic uh, you know. anyways uh, we're just gonna keep going hopefully we can get a good selection here very low tolerance right now we can bump this up here or we still got a very Solid color. Alright, let's continue our selections. And yeah, I might be going at like a snail's pace, guys, for those of you who do know how to do this a little bit more efficiently. But the main goal is pretty good. The main goal of this is to keep it all uniform. We're trying to keep this looking as close to that skin as possible. Um, some skins have taken me upwards of about three to five hours just because I'm super picky with how I make the textures so it's all preference like I said the more time you guys are willing to put into your skins the better they're gonna look and right here here's the thing too I'm gonna be saving this as a separate file I'm gonna save this as this one and then I'm gonna keep the, uh, the original so if I have any of these little marginal errors where it's just like four or five pixels right here Moving into the next one, I can make a simple cut on the old one or copy, paste it right on top, and it's going to look just fine. So we've got this nice border here. It looks pretty good. It's going to go all the way around for the little uh, marks in the short. Same exact thing. Control U, and we're just going to keep on chugging along with 28. So there it is. That's what we've got so far, and we've still got down the middle and right over here. So we're still going at a pretty decent pace here. And all we got to do now, we've got to make about two... Two, about two more selections, and then we should be good. So we've just got to do this area here and this area here. So let's see. Let's get a better selection. That's a pretty good one. Uh, that's a great one, and another good one. So see, this this is why having these like you can. I mean, if you're the most daring person alive, you could do this with paint. I would never recommend that in my entire life, but it's doable. It's just probably. You, the old quote from uh, South Park, you know, how you're going to have a bad time. Paint is like bare basics. Draw this line here. It's not going to be pretty. Like, that's basically how paint works. Paint.net, though, extremely easy to do. But um, Paint.net, very newcomer friendly, I'll say. But as far as you pick up Photoshop, you can do anything. Like, 99% of the time when you say, like, oh, that photo must be edited or... Oh, that person was edited uh, with photos editing software. 99% of the time, when you mention photo editing software, you know, Photoshop comes to mind. It's incredible. You can do so many things in so many different ways. You can pretty much do whatever, and that's that's why it's such a good program. Like, you know, I might have my preference to paint.net just for doing textures alone, but there's a lot of other things that, you know, Photoshop wipes the floor with paint.net, but... For simplicity's sake, if you're just getting right into this, I would highly, highly recommend Paint.net. But as far as quality and of software for more than just this, definitely stick with uh, stick with Photoshop. And for those of you in chat, uh, oh, shy guy, thank you so much. Uh, if you guys have any questions at all as far as what I'm doing. Please, please feel free to ask. This is supposed to be a tutorial for the community, for anybody right now that wants to learn how to do this, potentially for the region or for themselves if they want to make like a purple Ike or something, whatever it might be. So, I'm going to keep going along here. And also, once again, for those of you that are just tuning in for this, what I'm doing right now, I am making a custom skin for our very own, I believe he's number 8 on the PR. But Jose V, uh, the Nest player, he wants a. Oh wow! I'll edit this later. He wants a conquer Nest, conquer the squirrel from the old, I believe, uh, PlayStation One game. Pretty sure it's on the on the PlayStation One. But uh, basically, what I do for those of you who might be new to this concept, 
uh, for the PR players in our region, um, getting PR in SoCal is no easy task. I'm sure any PR player or any past PR player can tell you that there's an immense amount of skill in this entire region, so it's really awesome to see the diversity in characters, it's awesome to see the diversity in playstyles, and really just all the different things that players do in this region, it's, it's actually incredible. But, um, it's, it's really fun to see all the different stuff, and a little bit of a of an incentive to some degree for those to keep striving to do well to you know constantly improve i make these pr skins so it's kind of like a thank you for being so good at this game but also more of like a little bit of a, i guess a personal tribute to yourself you know kind of giving back like i did this look what i get you know kind of like a little prize to some degree but um see i've got a pretty good selection like i said all these little pickups in the selection here and here we can, we're going to be saving this as a separate file so the new one um, will save separately the old one we can always just copy individual pixels or individual small selections and make those as we go along so make this 28 enter and there we go so this is by no means done because I don't like this at all I think that looks sloppy personally I think it looks sloppy so I will be editing that but what, what we're going to be doing now is we're going to save this as, and we're going to save it as a PNG. Right now you can save it in Photoshop, all kinds of things. PNG. And I'm going to call this Where New. So now, here's here's like your first step into really what we're doing. Compressions, all this slow, well, whatever. We're saying here. So, that's what we got going on. So now there is the first texture done. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into Brawl Box, Brawl Box, and this is probably the most tedious texture realistically. The rest of them are going to be like one or two easy selections. That one's kind of annoying just because it's like one solid color. So anyways, we're going to go all the way to the bottom, go to where, and remember, the goal of this was to change this one here. So we're going to hit Control R to replace the texture. And here it is. You'll see it. New. It's going to pop up all this different stuff. Format CMPR is fine. Don't worry about that. All you got to do is hit OK. So now that we have the new green shorts, now we get to see them in action. And there they go. Perfect. So, there's our model. And what you're going to want to do here is you can scroll forward, and there we go. That's exactly what I was looking for. So, we've got the selection. You can rotate it. Perfection. That's exactly what I'm looking for. So, now if you want to compare this to the original texture, we've got this one here. And we can pull it up. So, we got green with a yellow outline. And that's what we're talking about. Green, yellow outline, there it is. So, that's the first part, and that's really probably the uh, the hardest part for the most part on this uh, on this one here. So, if we look forward, you know, I'm going to zoom in just a tad here, just to kind of get a better idea. Not the biggest image, so I might look a little pixelated, but basically what we're going to do now is on this jacket, I see a white outline near the hood and a yellow outline near the base and around the wrist line, whatever, whatever that portion of the jacket's called. So, uh, same exact process. We can also make, I'll do uh, the shoes a little bit later. That might be a little bit tedious, but still very doable. But so far, there's our first one. So, everything you see here, um, I'm not gonna be doing every single thing uh, in the most perfect fashion as far as what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna patch up some of this stuff to make it look a little bit cleaner, you know, I'm. All of Soul Cal is about quality here, let's be honest. So, not all of this is going to be uh, exactly like this. But, um, yeah, so there's the first portion. Got the shorts done. The hair, I think, we'll leave alone for the time being. The hat, no. The bag, the bag. Now, let's see, what are we looking for again? We are looking for the jacket. Let's see. I think this might be a uh, purple. It could be. You know what? This, if I'm. Let's see. I'm going to do the texture. Let me pull it up real quick. Let's see. Okay, so here's the texture. And it'd be around the outline. Now, this one might not work entirely this way. Uh, let's see here. So what I'm going to do is, uh, my goal, I want these portions of the sleeve to be the yellow that we have down here. And I want this portion here to be white, actually. He has a white, a uh, green scarf. That of which uh, I could make orange, but I think I might make it white. This is realistically all up to preference, guys. This is however you want to make it. It's like any other thing in your build. You can kind of just figure out what you want to do and just roll with it. So 
Uh, for this buckle here, I'm going to make it similar to a zipper to some degree, so I'm going to make that silver. Not too hard to do either. Very, very easy process. Same exact thing. So far, we have the shorts. The jacket is on its way. Uh, the hat. Uh, the hat itself, for the time being, I'm going to be leaving alone. Um, I'm going to talk to Jose V later about what he would like to do with it. But everything else, I'm going to be talking uh, strictly... A little more, a little more. I'm going to be talking strictly about what I'm going to edit here. All of the processes are exactly the same. But basically, the process for everything else here is identical. So as you can see, we got the green. Oh, you know what? There's the scarf. And that dark blue. Oh, I think that blue right there is for the waistband. Back on. Yeah, you know what? That might be it right there. And the nice part is, too, especially if you were to save these in, uh, let's see. Especially if you are to save these in different um, files, it's really easy to go back, back up. Like, if I made a mistake with the wear, like I didn't like how the shorts look, I could always go back, replace it with the old icon or the old file. So now we're going to go with the front. So we have all of this blue right here. And let's see, I'm trying to find the nice blue outer sleeve where it's rolled up right here. So it should be a little bit lighter blue. This is just a process of picking and choosing what parts you want. So this is the scarf, these are the shoes. Uh, let's see. Let's go down the line too. Alright, let's see here. You know what, I think this might be it here. This might be it. Um, I'm gonna test it out real quick. So once again, I'm gonna make this portion a nice bright yellow to match the portion on his shorts. So let's go and do that. So we're gonna go back into Photoshop. We're gonna go right. Let's see that was on the I believe back front. Yep, there it is. So now uh, we can also use the magic wand tool very, very much so. And the fact that it's surrounded by green gives us a nice contrast. So it shouldn't really be hard at all to make this selection at all. So I think we can turn up the tolerance. Turn up the nice ten. Easier selection for sure. And as always, guys, you know we are in the uh, middle of this 24-hour stream. I get the the massive pleasure to be able to start it off. But as always, there's going to be a lot of stuff to come, guys. So don't go anywhere. I am definitely going to be, you know, picky with what I'm doing here. That's just kind of how I am. That's how I make the skins. But uh, the main reason we're here, guys, we are making this big pot bonus right now for the Big Balk. For those of you who don't know what the Big Balk is, it's going to be the super awesome national tournament here in SoCal where we are going to have the best of the best flown out from New York, from Texas, all over the U.S. and have them compete. So it's going to be a lot of fun seeing all that, but having a little bit more of an incentive, saying here we got this nice wad of cash we're adding to the big pot, so always a pleasure to help out, always a pleasure to see all the community members come together to make something great, and that's basically what SoCal does 24-7. Alright, so, got the selection here. I could be right, I could be wrong, but at this point it's just a little bit of experimentation. So we're trying to make this like a bright yellow, so we're going to change the hue a little bit, same exact thing. It's like an orange, probably not looking for that. That's a little bit more of an orange. Probably edit these however we want, really. Change the saturation however you want. Uh, we want a really nice saturated yellow. There, that's a probably a pretty good one. Turn up the saturation. Maybe? We'll see. Nah. We'll keep that on the low end. Keep this at zero. You might want to change. And yeah, guys, while I'm doing all this stuff, of course, we got our very own. Let's see, who's out there right now? Teals. You know what? I, can I see that? Teals, Yink, and Blank all chilling on the uh, on the setup right now. So, there's our selection. There's the color change. So, now we are going to go up to File, and there are shortcuts for this, too, so you don't have to use. Control Shift S. Always, always easy. Shortcuts make everything easier. So, same thing. We're going to save it. But we're going to save this as new, same thing, just to make it easier, separate it a little bit, make it all easy. So now we're going to pull back up Brawl Box, 
And this is, basically, this is how it's going to work. You guys are going to want to experiment. That's really how I figured out how to do this, and this is not difficult at all. You can ask anyone who's ever done a texture edit. You know, once you get good at this, and I, I might not be the most proficient with uh, Photoshop. Okay, you know what? This actually works out, too, because I needed to recolor that. This makes it this much easier. So now, that portion right there was here, and I'm going to look for this right here, because I'm going to be making this portion white. So that's going to work out, actually. So, uh, I'm going to be making this red, actually orange, too, to match Congress first. That's going to work. So, knowing that, we have this portion here, which is not going to be yellow. We're going to be going control alt z z z z z z there it is. Actually, let's go back. Let's go to. So now, uh, I'm going to try and make this white. And I'm also going to do the selection here, because I believe that's what we're going to be looking at here. And I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more here. Okay. So now that we've made our selection, same exact process, guys. This is really super basic it's not that difficult to do we're going to take away all of the saturation so we get a little bit of white there and if you want you can i would never recommend this you can always turn it all the way up turn it all the way down but you get no texture when you do that so you really want to avoid that at all costs so if you're going to use this lightness bar at all you have to make the most minute changes like the furthest i would go is like plus five anything beyond that i wouldn't touch uh, mainly because of the fact that the further up you take it the lower it lowers the quality overall of the texture so there we go, we're gonna hit control S, we're gonna save it, and now we're gonna go back over here. And once again, we're gonna go back to right here, we're gonna be changing this, we're gonna hit control R, we're gonna replace it, hold this up, and there we go. So now we're gonna go back to the model, and actually, once again, this is gonna work out in my favor too. So this, I'm gonna be making yellow, so now that I know this, uh, it's gonna make it that much easier to do. And I have an hour left, so I still have a decent amount of time. A lot of this is just showing you how to do the edits, the things you might have to figure out. It's just kind of playing with it, really. But, so the center portion is white, and this portion we're going to be making yellow. So, there's the picture once again that we're basing this off of. So the shorts are done. Going to be changing this to yellow, this to white, and the shirt I'm going to make in like a nice, like a nice orange, probably. Alright, so, pull it back up. And we're going to be changing this, and I'm pretty sure now I know where this is, the little rotated portions in Photoshop. So, these parts right here. So that's, let's see. So now, I'm going to go backward real quick. And the nice part is, uh, you can do, oops. In Photoshop, uh, it's Control, Control Alt Z to do all of your, uh, uh, basically, reverting back to what you did. In paint.net, you're gonna hit Control Z, Control Z, Control Z. It's super easy to do. But with um, with Photoshop, Control Alt Z backs up, Control Shift Z uh, redoes it for you. With paint.net, it's Control Z or Control Y. It makes it a little bit easier. So once you're there, uh, we are gonna make this portion white. We already said that, so we're gonna go pull it back up again. We're gonna make this zero. And we're gonna make this to, you know what, we'll say like, we'll say four. I feel like five is too much. So that part's done, and we're going to deselect that with Control D, or if you're in paint.net, that is going to be Enter for you, all the same, really easy to do. And we're going to zoom in again, and this part, this is where we are going to want yellow, because the yellow is the edge of the sleeve, and that's basically what we saw earlier, that's what the Conquer is looking like a little bit more picture, so we don't want that, we're just going to do a small selection here. And like I said, this is tedious. The way I am doing it is tedious. If you are uh, more experienced with Photoshop specifically, this will take you, I don't know, five seconds to do a lot of this. Most people would do it a lot quicker. Um, I myself am more experienced with Paint.net, so it might be a little bit 
quicker. Some take me an hour or two, some take me three, four, it all depends on the character. Some are hard to edit, some aren't. But now we're just gonna go and we're gonna make this yellow. Which I believe is like negative 155 is what I had to do before. Let's change that to a five. And there we go, that's what we're looking for. And saturation, I don't think we need, really need to change that. We'll put it up plus, put plus 10, nothing, nothing beyond that really. So, uh, there we go again, we've got a nice selection there. We're gonna zoom out just a tad, and there it is. So we're gonna save it once again, and now we're gonna go back, and once again, it's just a simple, over and over and over and over. It's just playing around with it, shifting things, editing pictures, that's all it really is. Really not too hard to do. And let's do one. You know what? I saved over the original, which is okay because I can always go back to the download and change it if need be. It's fine, it doesn't really matter because now I've got the exact picture I'd like. So now we're going to look at it in the model. And there we go. So we have the yellow sleeves, just like Conquer, the white portion right in here, and then this part right here, I'm going to make white as well. So that should be right here. And all we're going to do, same exact process. And it seems like I'm saying this over and over because I kind of am, but this is not difficult, guys. Like, a lot of people think, oh, this is incredible, like, you know, texture edits. Oh, they're so hard to really not. Like, it takes very little time to figure it out. And this tutorial essentially lays out everything you're going to need to know, everything you need to do. It's really, really not difficult. So, so we can make all sorts of selections. The thing, too, is some of these uh, might be blank, actually. Sometimes there's a lot of... Some of the selections you need to make... Uh, like all this green here, none of this appears in the texture. So you don't really have to worry about some of this stuff if you were to edit it. It's just kind of... It's like a canvas. It's it's all of the canvas that they make. For whatever reason, uh, they chose green. More often than not, the reason they do that is because selections become that much easier. Uh, because it's a very high contrast in color with blue. Blue and green aren't exactly... They're both cool colors. But... Nevertheless, it's not too hard to differentiate between those two, so texture edits become that much easier. I'm gonna put this in four, just like the other, and there we go. So we're gonna deselect, and we're gonna hit Control Shift S because I want to save this actually as the new one. I'm gonna save it. We're gonna go on top of this one this time. Gonna say okay. And we're gonna pull up all box once again, and I think that is right. Here. So we're gonna replace it right there, and. There it is. I hope. Yep, there it is. <laughs> Alright, perfect. So, we have got the white portion from his jacket right here. That's exactly what I'm looking for. The yellow portion on the end. And once again, not all of this is going to be 100% perfect. I'm likely, especially on the shorts, I'm going to be going back and editing some of this later. And uh, I'm going to keep an eye on time. Once it hits 10.30, I'm going to be, I'm going to be swapping to the... Uh, icons. Icons are really, really easy to do as well. Very, very simple. Even easier than making the costume itself. But the main reason some of the stuff takes me a while is, uh, especially with PR skins, I am a perfectionist. If something's not up to like how I feel it should look, I, I don't, I don't want to release it. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's never really a reason to release something that I feel word for word might be like half-assed. That's I'm not, never looking for that. You know, so. All about quality as always, so. Uh, but here we go, so this is what we have so far. Got the nice yellow. Might make this a little bit uh, darker, a little bit more of a saturation to kind of match the shorts, because right now it doesn't match up super well. Might change that later. The jacket, actually, I am gonna be changing, because right here we've got like a nice, uh, kind of a sky blue, more of a vibrant color right here. It's kind of dull. So we're gonna change that right now, actually. So we're gonna go right back, same exact thing. Uh, I believe it's this one right here could be wrong, it could be the... Mm, no, I think that's for his bag, his backpack, so we'll be changing that later. But, same thing. We'll be pulling this up here. That's the same thing. Like I said, anybody can do this. And the thing is, too, if you guys were wanting to do this for your region, um, because as far, once again, for those of you that don't know, I do this for the PR players. So all the players that end up on the, uh, the power rank for SoCal, uh, I message them on uh, pretty much Facebook 
or I'll talk to them at a tournament like, hey, you want a skin? Tell me what you want. Um, and the main reason I do it, once again, is make it an incentive. You know, it's like, oh, these people get these super cool skins. People are like, how do they do that? It's like, oh, you got to get on the PR. It's like, that's, that's, you know, people are like, oh, wow, you get a cool, like, custom skin. Like, you get what you want because you, you know, you put all this time into the game. You help support the community. Like, you, you're putting all this effort into this game. That's awesome. So, I love seeing that from all these different players. It's really awesome to just show them how it's done. Like, show them, like, oh, this is what SoCal's all about, you know, but... You know, we might look cool when we're doing stuff here in SoCal, but all the while, you know, we're looking cool in our play. Looking cool in our play, and we're going to look cool doing it, so. Anyways, uh, so let's see. Let's see. Changing that blue look about that. You know what? I'm going to do this. I don't have to keep backing up, backing up. Can I copy this one? Okay, let's see. Let's see Photoshop real quick. There we go. You know what? Uh, I'm going to say okay. I can always undo that, but... Say okay, and paste that in there, make this easier on ourselves. Don't have to keep backing out, backing out. So, there's a picture. So, it's like a little bit of a skyish blue, like I said before. So, pull that right here. Uh, it's kind of close, might make it a little bit more. Yeah, it's a little bit too light. Might want to bring it back a little bit. But, uh, yeah, stream. As always, though, guys, like, I'm not just confined to answering questions about textures and stuff. Ask me how my day is. Ask me whatever you guys want. You know, feel free. Like, all the while, pretty much everyone on stream is going to be doing a technical AMA to some degree. So, uh, you know, got to kill two hours. I'm not just going to ramble about colors and pictures and textures and whatever else. So. Feel free to ask questions, talk about whatever in the chat, you know, I'm not trying to stream not to you guys. It seemed like I did that last night, I accidentally, like, timed someone out, so that was the thing. Oh, I like that, that's way better. Alright, so we're gonna say okay. And, let's see what picture it is on. Back front. Uh, so we're gonna deselect this, and we are going to save this as, and we'll overwrite the new one. All the same, super easy to do. Save it, and hit okay. Let's see. How did I get into competitive Smash? That's a good question, actually. Uh, I started playing Project M, actually, back in high school around, uh, I think, freshman year, maybe sophomore year, early on, uh, more so. It was either late freshman year or early sophomore year. And I saw a video that Shofu posted, for those of you who know who Shofu is. Uh, he made a video showing, like, uh, I think he was using Wolf or something, or he was using all sorts of characters and I was like what is this so I looked it up I went to the website and I'm like oh my this is insane like this is one of the coolest things I've ever seen like and at the time I played Brawl for a while I'd played it for a couple years um, but I, I just kind of dropped it for a while I played Pokemon for a while um, and I just never really went back to Brawl it just kind of got boring to me for a while but seeing all these characters move fast and stuff I was like wow this is awesome and then I just started playing the game, uh, and I think the version at the time was like 2.5, 2.5G, or 2.1 maybe? I, I don't remember the exact version, but uh, nevertheless, I loved it, started playing, um, and then eventually as I'm chugging along, I played like uh, Squirtle, Mario, Mario, like all, all tons of characters. Then when 3.0 came out, uh, I could play as my favorite Mario character, which is Yoshi. Yoshi's always been a super fun character for me always thought he was awesome so I just picked up Yoshi and at the time especially in 3.0 he had some broken things about him not like you know people would say his recovery was too good to some degree it was um, but all the while like his side B as far as attacking was stupid um, his, uh, let's see, his armor I, I feel didn't need to be nerfed out neither here nor there but what, what else was dumb Oh, it's down air. It was a free combo. It was kind of dumb at the, at the time, but then 3.5 came out, the, the nerfs came out, and I was like, okay, you know what? I'm still going to live with this, and I'm still playing Yoshi to this day, no questions asked. But the way I got into competitive, though, after I picked up Yoshi, I was just, you know, I think I'll go to a tournament. So I looked up uh, stuff online. I was on Reddit at the time, and, you know, as I often am, and... I just kind of decided, you know what, maybe I'll go to a tournament. Let's see if 
you know, let's see if I think I can take a few people. So I went to my first tournament, and it was a tournament hosted by none other than Venom, number two in SoCal right now. And it was called, I think, Symbiote or Symbiote. I don't remember how it's pronounced, but uh, he was hosting the tournament. And uh, he was he was the first person to ever allow me on the mic for commentary, which is kind of a fun fact. But when I went to that tournament, the first person I faced was uh, Fro Frosty. And the funny part of this whole tournament was uh, I beat Fro Frosty. I lost to Maddox. I forget the other player I faced in Losers Round 1 or whatever it was. But I beat him. And then I lost to, I think, Machiavelli. So, uh... It was fun being humbled, you know, knowing that, you know, I'm not amazing at this game, which is definitely, you know, I'm not on the PR, I can't call myself amazing, but, you know, the, that's the nice part too about SoCal, no matter who you are, who you play, there's either A, someone better, or just someone who can show you something, that's what's always nice, and as, you know, old as this game is, or not old, how young this game is, there's always some new things you can learn, so... Being humbled, especially here in SoCal where it's fairly easy to be humbled, <laughs> was kind of an experience, but I loved it, knowing that, wow, all these people are better than me, like, by far, so there's always something to do, like, and all the while, like, playing Yoshi, like, how many people play Yoshi, and I still love the character, I think he's got awesome tools to work with, he's always fun to play as, his combos are crisp, but... It's a lot of fun. So that's kind of where I got into competitive Smash. Um, and commentating as well, you can all thank Venom for giving me my first time on the mic. Uh, I, I had had a little bit of experience with commentary before because I have a YouTube channel. But um, uh, that's kind of where I started with commentary. And then from there, I just kept coming to balconies, kept going to different tournaments and stuff. And it just kind of... At least for me, it, I was just comfortable on the mic, and I think some people might struggle with that at first, but, yeah, so, for that hat, I'm just scrolling through stuff. These are the shoes, no, that's where the top portion, I want, right here, okay. So, enough of me, uh, talking about nothing, we're gonna go here, so, what we're looking for now is blue around the edges, yellow around the straps, and like a nice, deep indigo almost around the rest of the shoe. So we're going to go to the wear. So this portion right here, we're going to make a nice, what is it? I'm going to switch the okay. uh, yellow, a nice deep yellow, like a, a highlight yellow, almost. So, same exact process, guys. Stop talking about commentary. You are too Thanks, Messi. Always a pleasure. But, uh, yeah, so let's see. I'm gonna lower the tolerance on this a little bit, just because that's a little too much. But we've got a good selection the first time. But yeah, custom skins too. Um, originally I saw what was his name? Oh wait, his tag was Mole Man. Uh, I don't know if you guys know who that is, but he was on Reddit one day and he posted like his own custom build, and I was like, "Whoa, what's this? I had no clue what this was," and. I looked at it and I was like, oh wow, these are so cool, like you can edit this game, like I didn't even know you could do that. So then I just went to town, like for a good month I just started working on compiling all of the best that I could find on Brawl Vault, making my own stuff and figuring out how to mod this game. And from there, it just took off, like people, people like started helping me with things, people started explaining like, oh you can do this, this is a software you can use, this is how you do this, this is how you do this. And I just kind of developed somewhat of a knack for it. You know, I'm not I'm not the best at doing this. Like, I'm not Theta, I'm not Silent Doom, his animating is godlike. But you know, anybody can pick this up. Anybody can do this. But it just takes time and patience. Like some of this stuff can be a little bit tedious, but the end result, and I'm sure that uh, those that worked on this game in the past can tell you, you know, seeing all of this stuff come together and in one, you know, consolidated build, it's just so cool to see, just to see all the people working together, and especially with, like, the balcony build, you know, we've got Corny doing work all the time to get things compiled and making them look good, so always having that aspect of customization, I always felt was really, really cool. Okay, oh, my bad, hold up, money match? Well, you want to money match me at Yoshi Dittos? All right. Is your tag 
X Capel or Capel. I'm not too sure how to how to go about pronouncing that. Yeah, that's a good yellow. That works perfect. So there's the first portion. So this is the top part of the shoe. And actually, you know what? I'm just going to edit the shoes, and then I'm going to go into how to make the portraits and such, because I don't want to take too much time just editing little bits of stuff. Uh, I'm going to go show you. This is just the overview of how to edit stuff. Really straightforward. But uh, portraits and stuff, there's multiple ways to do it. I'm going to show you kind of the easy, this is how you do it method that's like really, really basic. Oh, Apple Quest. Hey, what's up? Yeah, we need the Yoshi Yoshi Ditto. Yoshi Ditto's are super fun. Burnt Socks showed me the way of the Yoshi Ditto, so that's always, really, that's always a lot of fun. But I remember, well, what was that? Showtime against Burnt Socks and Grand Finals in the Arcadian or uh, Winner's Finals or something like that. That was, yeah, that was that was a lot of fun to watch. But Yoshi Ditto's can be high-octane ridiculous. So, all right, we're going to bump this up to about eight. Too much, we'll bring it back down to like five ish. But yeah, how are you guys Saturdays going? Everybody loves Saturday for the most part, unless you gotta work on Saturday, which is never fun. But, we're chilling here in SoCal, as always. Yeah, I'm just gonna edit these shoes and then I'm gonna be. Here, I'm gonna do this the old easy, easy guy. I'm gonna do the rectangle selection. But yeah, tag Apple. Yeah, we need a Yoshi Ditto, dude. Yoshi Dittos are a ton of fun. They're kind of ridiculous. They're kind of nutty, but that's what makes them fun. Let's be honest here. So, and here's the thing too. Like, there's so many people out there that say Yoshi's garbage tier. Yoshi can't do anything. He's such a character. I don't know why you're saying that, because he's actually not terrible. Like, there's so many people that still don't believe me when I say that alone, but Yoshi got some pretty interesting tools to work with that a lot of people just don't utilize. Like, he's one of the only characters in the game that can literally do anything out of shield. I don't know if you guys know this, but it's called a double jump land. You can literally do anything out of shield. Down, smash, up, tilt, doesn't matter. Those are probably the best options for Yoshi. But what other character is going to be able to do that? So, really crazy stuff. So we brought this up to 49. And we brought this up to... This? Oh, yeah. On a, but the thing... We were actually on a Discord chat last night. I was on a Discord chat with Zubat. Just kind of talking about the matchup. Uh, matchup chart of uh, Yoshi and we're gonna be releasing that within the next couple of days actually we're gonna finally have a matchup chart for Yoshi out um, this is pulling all the different Yoshi's I heart love tap Zubat Tombo combo hug um, myself uh, let's see who else was there scats uh, Pankapa, all, all sorts of Yoshi means some you may or may not have heard of at all, some you may have known for a while, it doesn't really matter, but long story short, we're finally going to have a matchup chart so people can see who does this character do well against, who does this character do terrible against, and everyone thinks that 99% of the cast absolutely bodies him, but that's not exactly true, but, you know, he's got a lot of tools, we'll, uh, we'll be showing you. What version of Brawl Box? That's a good question, actually. Realistically, the one I use is 0.71. That's not even the newest version. Yeah, it's it's they, they update it constantly, but realistically, any version beyond like I don't know, like something like and, and, and beyond like 0.67, anything like 0.71 and newer, you're fine with. Anything beyond that, you're totally fine with. So. Anyways, we've got a little bit of a shoe edit, and the last part I'm going to be doing before I finally jump to icons and such, I'm going to be changing here a little bit. I'm going to be changing this to a nice like indigo. So let's get going on that. And uh, yeah, for the managers too, um, 
for the, the song manager and all of that. That stuff, uh, people will be going over later. Um, there's multiple ways to put things into the game. The reason I sort of don't enjoy using the managers is some of the stuff doesn't always work. I've had experiences where I've dragged and dropped stuff, and then I've just had to do it the old-fashioned way as far as putting it into the... Uh, just throwing it in myself, like, using the old-fashioned, like, folder, file, this and that, so... Yeah. And yeah, so now we're just going to be, this last highlight here I'm going to be doing, this is all, once again, for those of you turning in, tuning in that do not know what this is, uh, this is all for Jose V. He's recently on the SoCal PR, and he is getting a custom skin made by me uh, for Conker's, uh, Conker, at least. The, the game itself is Conker's Bad Fur Day on the N64. Um, and he wanted a custom custom skin, which I make for all PR players, by the way. Uh, made him a custom skin. Uh, oops. And he wanted one modeled after Conquer. So I think I got about five minutes here. This guy. And he basically wanted one model after him because he apparently speedruns the game, which is interesting. So knowing that, I uh, messaged me. He's like, hey, can you make this? I'm like, yeah, of course I can. That's not too hard. So, let's see. Snake. Just about done with the selections here. Alright, uh, I think that's about good. Almost done here. Like, there's just like two more minor selections. Alright, again guys, any questions you want to uh, chime in with, feel free so you don't just have me talking to myself or all that fun stuff, so let's see here, selection there, and I'm just about done, sorry, uh, final one, I'm going to be changing the shoes finally, and we're going to make these like a nice indigo blue, that's the, that's the goal here, something almost like that, I'm going to zoom out a little so we get rid of those pixelated guides. So it's like, yeah, it's almost like a deep indigo. So I'm gonna go back here and pull it back up one more time. After this, I'll show you all the in-game stuff, how to make in-game icons. It's extremely easy to do. Looks like nature's got four stocks, so that's a thing. And I'm not far off from you either. Yeah. Okay. Turn the saturation up and get it better. You know what? Actually, that works perfect. I'm just gonna do a little bit of that. All right. So, I'm gonna deselect, and we are gonna save this one more time. All over the new one. No, nope, no Photoshop. Now we want PNG. That's what you're gonna save it as. Save that. And actually, not no. I'm gonna save this over here. Save it. Yep. And hit OK. All right. Last thing here. So now finally, we and again, guys, remember this is not. This is likely not gonna be the final version because there are a couple of things that I still am gonna be picky about. I want to edit later. So not all of this is what you're gonna see. It's gonna be what he's gonna be using on stream. Likely, I'm gonna edit at least two or three things on here with my laptop later on today, uh, just to be picky. That's how I am. But there the shoes are. There, there they are, perfect. So you see we have the nice yellow up front. Compare that. No, we can do this. Can do the old fashioned dragon, dragon scope. So as you can see, have the nice blue, the nice yellow, 
and I can even change the rim as well. I believe it's actually white already. Oops. Yeah, it's white, so we already got that. And as you can see, there's all this choppiness here. That's exactly what I don't like, so I'm going to get rid of that later on. I'm going to edit that. So, we've got pretty much all of our skin, and most of it done. Uh, things are going to be edited later. Uh, I'm likely to make a crown version of this. Somebody wanted me to put a crown on top instead of just a hat. That's pretty doable, pretty doable. But as of right now, so I'm gonna be changing the shoes uh, in a little bit later. Uh, my slot goes until 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, so we still have about a half hour left for my slot right now. So for the last 30 minutes now, I'm gonna be showing you all about how to make icons. And icons, not difficult. So now that we have all of these textures edited, uh, we've got the nice shoes, the shorts done. Uh, the sleeves, the nice white portion. I'm gonna change this to orange later. Like I said, this isn't done. This isn't done done, but anyways. Now for what we have, we're gonna hit Control S, which is gonna save what we have. And then I'm gonna go through the regular process as if as if I technically finish this 100 percent So you need two files here. Because of single player modes and because of regular modes. This is a PCS file and you need a pack and PCS file. To make both, it's super easy. Since we already have the PCS, we're gonna go to save as, and right there. You got save it as either a PCS or pack, whichever one you don't have or need, save it as that. So we're gonna save it, and it should just go right away. So I can close this, open it up in documents, and we're good to go. But now for icons, now that we have both of the files, and if you wanna completely forego icons and not even have them in the game, you don't need them. You really don't. The skin works just fine without them. None of that is really going to be influenced by that anyway. But now what we're going to do, we're going to do the old-fashioned way how some people do it. So we're going to hit Control p once the skin is highlighted. Maximize this. Oop, I'm way over here. And we're going to bring up the side window. We're going to zoom out a little bit. So there's Ness. And we're going to just kind of clean up the model a little bit. Get rid of the stuff we don't need. And the bat, I believe, is 16. There it is, purple. And here's the skin. Now, if you were to do this the old-fashioned way, how some people do it, this, you don't want a T-pose. You don't want him looking like, uh, I'm a robot, you know, so. All we're gonna do is we're gonna go to desktop, and this is just from the balcony build, and this is how we're gonna do it. This is the easiest way. To pose him using, like, an animation for, oh, jeez, what did I do? Oh, no. Is it this? It's not that. Is it this? It's not that. It's this. It's that. Oh, wait. That one. There we go. What happened to chat? Is it this? It's this. There we go. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think we're still good no matter what on there. Anyways, so we got half an hour left. We're good. So this is going to work exactly the same if you're using homebrew or if you're using full, regular, hackless, whatever. All versions are going to work exactly the same using this method. So what you're going to do is you're going to go into your SD card, or just if you have the Project M build like on a desktop, you're going to go to Project M, PF, Fighter, and then you're going to scroll down or pick the character that you're working with, so Ness. And lastly, we're going to use the motion etc.pack file. Gonna double click that, and you're gonna see all these things up here pop up. All you're gonna do, you can select whatever pose you want. The wait animations, like when he's standing, waiting for things to happen. You can click loop to make it work infinitely. So there's your animation. So he's moving around, he's doing whatever. Or you can go to wait to two, because they have multiple waiting animations. What I like to do is either select an attack or select a animation for when they win. Okay, it's like win, win, wait, one. He's kind of like, you know, rubbing his neck or something. Or win, wait, two. That one's this one's probably the one I like the most. Looks really good. Or one where he has his invisible bat, but you can just always make that reappear with. Where's that? Just like that. So you can always do that. But I am going to not do that for myself. I'm just gonna. Oops. Really don't want that. Get rid of this. All right. So now the bat's invisible. Don't really need it because now we're gonna be going. Here. So this is the one I'm gonna use. So basically, I can select. I can select the the skin. 
and basically I'm going to select it on the very uh, last frame, so frame 81. And this is the frame that Ness is basically just standing there. Uh, kind of chilling, you can scroll in, zoom out, and here is where the easy part comes in. So now that we have this, all we're going to do is we're going to hit screen cap, really easy to do. Uh, for some computers it's different, whatever it might be. And we're going to go into Photoshop once again, pull it up, and we're going to make a new file, and this time it's going to be a screen cap version. So now uh, we have a lot of screens going on right now, so uh, we're going to get a fairly decent sized image, but nevertheless we're just going to highlight what we want, press enter on Photoshop or control shift X on uh, paint.net, which some use, some don't, I'm all up to you, you know, your preference. Uh, why is it not corrupting? I don't have the right tool that I screw up. What did I do? Uh, where did I go? Let me try that again. I'm gonna crop to what we want. And I don't know why this isn't working now. Hold up. Oops. There, we'll just go with that. Okay. So now this is where the easy part comes in. So now what you want to do, very similar to what we did earlier with like the magic wand, you're going to want to select, and you can always change the tolerance for this too. And if you notice, all of this little white space that you don't want in your picture because it just kind of looks lazy, it doesn't look good, you don't want, you don't want those lazy JPEG images in in your game, you're going to want to highlight all of this white area. And you know what, here we'll just do it all separate. We're gonna, whoa. Hold up. Oh. I am not doing things right. Uh, invert. There we go. Okay. So now I've got the right selection. I'm going to delete. And very similarly, I'm going to deselect. And highlight both of those. Whoops. Hit the screen. And delete. So, now that we have that done, if you look, we have a nice clean image of Ness. But we're not quite done. Still got 25 minutes, got a lot of time. So this image itself, if we were to look at it, how big is this image? Let's select all of it right now. Uh, where is it at? I think I might have to maximize this. I don't think there we go. Don't day, where's it at? Is that all? Either way, all I know is the image itself is not at the size that I'd like it. So, this is the picture itself. Yeah. So the CSP, or the Character Select Portrait, is the image you're gonna see at the results screen when the game is over, or when it's ended early, or the image that you see when you're picking your skin. So whenever you see someone in SoCal picking their custom PR skin, that's the image, you know? Really anything, it's, all right. So you select everything after you've deleted all of that white space, you're going to hit Control c to copy everything here, all the pixels, every single thing. And now what we're going to do, we're going to hit New, we're going to make a brand new image, and it's going to be 128, oops, 128 by 160. Don't deviate from that, that is the exact size. If you deviate from that in any way, shape, or form, likely, uh, guaranteed actually, the game will crash. It, it just happens. I've done it before, I've made the mistake myself of like one pixel off of five. Make sure that's exactly what it is. It's really easy to make sure that's what it is. So from there, we're just gonna paste. And you're like, wow, that's not at all what I want. So hold on, pull out a different layer. Control. I'm gonna want a new, you know what, Yeah, there it is. Okay, good. All right, so uh, what I did there is Control T. It works differently in Paint.net. That's more so what I'm used to um, because of that. But basically, in Paint.net, when you paste it, it'll ask you to either expand the canvas or don't. And from there, what you're going to want to do is, you know, you don't want to expand the canvas. You want 128 by 160. So now that we have that, we're going to drag it to this. 
And odds are you don't want it to be exactly the 128 by 160 because if you did that, then you would get something like this. It looks stretched, it looks gross. You don't like that. So you kind of want to make it look natural. Like, okay, centered, perfect, that looks nice. Uh, you can... Hmm? Yeah. Okay, better idea too. I was going to say, because I usually don't do it that way either. Alright, uh, hold on, let me back this up real quick. And where are you, computer? What's that? And why can I not undo? Come on, computer. Oh, never mind. Okay. So, uh, let's try this again. So, control T, gonna transform. And you said what? Hold shift? Alright. So now, uh, just as Moose Wad's kind of guiding me through Photoshop, uh, hold shift so that you do not change the aspect ratio. And now, if you look, it's going to look really nice and clean. This is exactly what we're looking for. Because otherwise, if you're changing the aspect ratio, it might look a little bit sloppy. It might not look too good. Oops. So there we go. So see how this is still looking really nice. I can't really deviate from it too much. It's going to look really nice and crisp. Oops. And I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to center it. And there it is. So this is basically your image now. And let's see. I'm going to click on a tool. We want to apply it. And there it is. Perfect. Look at how clean, nice, sexy that CSP looks. So now that we have our picture, this is what is going to show in game. This is what he is going to see when he selects the image itself. So now what we're going to do is now that we have this, we're going to hit Control Shift S. Bread and butter shortcuts. And we are going to go to PNG. And we'll title it, make it easy on yourself, CSP or whatever you want to call it. Save it and say OK. That works just fine. So there we go. We've got this. And now for the fun part too, we are going to hit Control A. And these controls are identical actually in uh, paint.net if you were to use that as well. Control A to select everything and Control C to copy. Now we're going to hit Control N. And now this is for the battle portrait. As you see people playing right now, that's what you're seeing on screen. The in-game shot while you're playing, that's what it's going to be. So for the resolution, you're going to want to go to width 48 by 56. Once again, do not deviate from this. It has to be this exact size. This is the exact size you need. So that is the picture itself. Um, and we're going to zoom in just a tad here. And actually, you know what? I'm going to zoom back out because we have got to paste this. Control T. Of course, it'll work a little bit differently in paint.net. But now we're going to hold shift. Actually, oh, it's supposed to be control. And we are going to shift. It is shift. Never mind. <laughs> All right. And we are going to shift it to pretty much however you want. Change it however you want, however you feel necessary. Zoom in if, if you have to. And... Let's see. Oops. I've literally done that twice now. Okay. Uh, and as we still go along, that's I think that looks pretty good. That looks pretty solid. So now we're just going to click away, click on the tool, whatever. You can hit deselect or enter in, uh, what's it called, in um, paint.net. It'll work exactly the same. And it might look a little pixelated, obviously, because you're scooting super far in. But it's going to look pretty much like this in game. It's going to look really nice, really clean. And exact same process. Now that we have it cropped, Control Shift S, and this is the Battle Portrait or BP for short. Save it as a PNG, all the same. BP. There we go. Looks really, really clean. And there it is. So we have two images done, and we are perfect on time. We have 19 more minutes. Perfect. And we have one more thing left to do. The only thing we have left to do is get the stock icon. Now the easiest way to do this is to either A, edit the existing stock icons in Brawlbox, or uh, you can do, let's see, or you can just crop this too. I mean, this one, this method works really well as well. Uh, all you would have to do is go here, and actually crop it as well. There's a lot of different ways to do this. I'm going to show both ways because I have plenty of time still. This first method, um, you can do. Uh, tons of different ways you can do it. Um, I wouldn't always recommend this method because it sometimes can get a little bit sloppy. Sometimes, but it still works just fine. So, uh, what we're going to do now is, as you can see in-game right now, 
with Meta Knight or Zero Suit, they have those uh, portraits going on for their stock icons. It's just their head. So, we're going to basically do that. Oops. We're going to select only Ness's head to where that's the only thing that's going to show. So, we're going to delete everything that is not Ness. So now what we're going to do, zoom out, and there it is. We have Ness's floating head. It's going to look a little weird at first, obviously. But it's going to look even weirder when you scale it all the way down. But, uh, yeah, all right, yeah, thanks for tuning in, though. Uh, once again, if you guys have any questions, I still am on the mic for 17 minutes. So feel absolutely free, ask questions and all that. Yeah, I got I got something to time. All right, so, uh, very, very, very similar process to everything we've done. We're just scaling things down slowly, really easy. So now we have the battle portrait, but we only have Ness's head. So now we're going to hit Control n for new, same exact thing in paint.net. And this time, we're going to be making the stock icon once again. So it's going to be 32 by 32. Once again, this has to be the size. If it's not this size, the game can crash, and you don't want that, obviously. So... Now that we have that, we're going to paste it in, and if you are in paint.net, it will automatically have like a selection for you, uh, and it'll ask if you want to expand the canvas. If you don't want to expand the canvas, you want that 32 by 32. If you're using paint.net, control T, and we're right here. So from here, we're going to hold shift, drag it all the same, and you want it to have, and this is where some people might not do it correctly, or they might make it look a little sloppy. You want to have at least one pixel. Let's see here. Yeah, you want to have at least one pixel all around for available space. And the reason for this is because you want to have a black outline. It might sound a little weird at first, but you want a black outline all around your stock icon. So to do this, select and hit apply. So we apply the transformation. There's the stock icon. Looks pretty good. But uh, you'll notice if you zoom out a little bit further, it's like, okay, looks good, looks good. And it doesn't look bad. Like, it looks fine as is. But the main reason that we do this is because, and you can look at pretty much any CSP or any stock icon, I should say, in Brawlbox or in anything, really, and it's going to have a black outline. It just makes it easier to see and just makes it look that much cleaner in general. So you can do it all sorts of ways. Uh, you can kind of do it the caveman way. Let me find it real quick. Pencil. This. There we go. Okay, so you got the pencil tool, and all you're gonna do, I believe the color here, is, we'll just check real quick. It's black, perfect. So, all we're gonna do now is the somewhat tedious task, but you do have to do this with every single. Uh, you don't have to, honestly. If you wanted to make this your stock icon, feel free. You could end this way all together. But all you're going to do is you want... Actually, back up a little bit here. Yeah. What you want to do is you want to make it look not entirely blocky, but you want to make it look somewhat natural. So as we go along, this is, again, this is somewhat tedious for most people. It's not at all required. It's just a polish aspect that I like to maintain with most stuff. So, still going. Okay, 
there it is. So there is our stock icon, and now if you zoom out, you'll see it looks just that much cleaner. It's really minute, obviously it's one pixel all the way around, but it will make a bit of a difference, especially once you finish up. So same thing, uh, Control Shift S, we are going to save this as a PNG, and just call it stock, really whatever. So actually, uh, still got about 10 minutes. Now I'm gonna go through the final, final process. How do I install all this? And that's really the big question that some people might mess up on, and it's really easy. So, I have a guide, actually. I'm going to make this easy for all of you. So what you do, look my name. Oh, hold up. Oh, no internet connection. So I'm assuming, does that mean we're not streaming? Yeah, I would assume so. <laughs> Either way, it's recording, so people will know. But, uh... Oh, here we go. Okay. So, um, yeah, I think we're going to be live within the next couple seconds if we're not already, but I think we're going to be back on. So, either way... Oh, if there's no internet, how are you guys streaming? So I guess we were streaming and Chrome did Chrome things? I don't know. But, so basically what... Oh, hold up. Oh, okay. Maybe he just doesn't like my profile. I got banned from Reddit. But, uh, yeah, it's someone's a gamer, always. Um, you know what? I'm gonna make this, uh... Firefox might try that out. Alright, we'll try Firefox out real quick. But, uh, actually, you know what? I can close this too. Because we are done with this now. We don't need this anymore. Um, so we can close it. That's fine. Doesn't really matter. Stuff's go back to normal, whatever. But uh, now that we have, now that we have all this, uh, we are gonna go. Basically, most people call it a simple. But uh, Reddit.com forward slash r forward slash that says BPM. I'm like, oh, hold up. It's still not loading. Uh, you know what? I'll 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 do without it. Um, basically, you're just gonna have to look up. Uh, I do have a guide for all of the costume numbers and all of the uh, all the different numbers for profile or portraits and whatnot. But instead of me using that, uh, you guys can look it up yourself. Uh, I'm sure we can link it in the video for the tutorial later. But basically, now if we open up our folder, we've got everything. We're gonna change the view real quick. We're gonna go to just a large icon. And there, there you have everything. And if you want to consolidate even more, and this is what I do myself, just call it art or really anything, just pictures and stuff. Just select all of those items, move it in one folder, and here you have all of the things you want. Let's see, load. Actually, you know what? Here, we're going to do this too. Because open with, it's going to ask for ball box. So we want this pack file to have the icon just for neatness sake. But, okay. So now, we're going to rename this, uh, we'll say Ness 05. But the reason being, actually, you know what? I'm going to pull it up on my phone. I'm going to innovate real quick. So basically what I'm doing here is to install, there is a little bit of a process to go about it. So what we're going to do is we're going to finally put this into a game. And it's really not hard to do at all. I'm going to have two things open real quick, actually. Fire, fire explorer, go to the desktop. And we're going to the battlefield. So now what we're going to do, I'm um, going to pull it up on my phone once again. Submitted. Okay. So all we're going to do now is to install. To install, it's really, really easy. All you have to do, uh, go to Project M, and this is on Hackless or, um, what's it called? Uh, Hackless or Homebrew, either one. Project M and PF. Now, once again, if you don't care at all about portraits, you didn't make them, you didn't really feel the need to make them, that's fine. You don't. You really don't need them. It's just if you want a nice clean build or you want something nice and clean, you want it easy to know what you're selecting unless you know which one you went over, fine. But for this uh, tutorial's sake, we're going to be going through the game. So uh, let me pull this up real quick. All time. And yeah, so I'm gonna post, or I'll tell you what the guide actually is called, because I posted it not too long ago. Let's see here. Ooh. 
Okay. So I have one for 3.5, but I also made one for 3.6. Just look up on uh, the subreddit. Just search, like, character textures 3.6 or something like that. I posted a full list of every single character in the game, so you know exactly what you're looking for. Uh, how do you use Seabliss on Mac? Unfortunately, I might not be the person to ask about that. Your best bet is to go, go to either Smashboards or Brawl Vault. Both of those people are great for helping. Or even better, go to the Discord, Custom Smash Discord. Both of those are all, or all of those are amazing resources for you to use, especially for C Bliss. A little bit of a weirder process than most things. But yeah, so those are your outlets I would recommend. But anyways, uh, so let's see. Uh, let's go down to Ness. And let me see. I don't know if we can show you. Probably show you. Let's see. Yeah. Let's see if it'll focus. Maybe. Uh, focus. There it is. So you can see everything is laid out. And what we're going to do. Uh, let's see if it focuses. Either way. Uh, so 05 goes over the white and red Ness. I know a lot of people like it. Some don't. Some don't. Whatever. I'm going to go over that one. So. The fact is, we're going to go to Fighter, same exact process, we're going to go to Ness, and if the uh, costume is from Brawl, excuse me, it will not be here. It won't be here. It's just how it works. Because it has to, it doesn't have to edit anything, it's already in the game. So all you do is you select one, hit Control, select the other, and hit uh, Control C, copy it, and then paste. So now we have both of those in there, they are in the game. They're in the game, guaranteed, no problem, you're fine. Refresh it, it's ordered. Okay. So the skin's in the game. Now we want to edit all the portraits. We're going to want to throw them in the game. And Ness, let's pull this up right now. I believe Ness. Hmm, let's see. This is always the fun part. We're going to open this with Brawl Box. Da, 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 da. And all these are going to have a little Brawl icon, Brawl Box icon, which is good. So that now you don't have to always do that, but let's see. This is just testing. We're going to have to find Ness. So Ness, let's see how it goes. Let's see. Should be three. Three images. This might be Ness. Let's hope this is Ness. Nope, that's Yoshi. All right, let's see. Who comes after Yoshi? We've got Yoshi, Kirby, and then Ness. So Yoshi's right here. Kirby here. This might... No, this isn't Ness. Ness is probably 60-something. There is a list, once again, on Reddit if you do need to know what is what. The main point of this right now is we are trying to figure out who is who for which costume. That is Fox. Oh. Alright, we gotta find Ness. That's that's mainly the goal here. Is we know he has his pajama Ness skin, and that's all I'm really looking for here. Let me see if I can find it real quick. I'm gonna... I'm gonna break away from this real quick. I gotta find this because this will make this ten. The guide itself makes it ten times easier because you don't have to do this click and guess game. It's just a matter of okay, here is this. Now, f now go here, go there. Um, but basically, we're looking for the correct number as far as. Let's see. We're just basically looking for the number that matches up to the red hatted nest. And once we do that, let's see. Okay, here it is. Perfect. So the reason we'll do this, you can look up the guide for all of the pictures. So Ness is 10. So 10, 100. Here it is. So these are Ness right here. So this is the final part I'm going to do, guys, and then we're going to move on to the next section. Um, do you tend to replace textures or add new character slots? I myself replace Personally, uh, I do want to get to use Bliss soon, and hopefully I'll have a tutorial out about that. Um, sometimes it doesn't show up. That's because, once again, if it's a Brawl costume, it's already in the game. They don't have to add any code. They don't have to do anything special to make sure that it's in the game. But now what we're going to do, this is exactly, this pertains exactly to what you're talking about. So this is Purple Ness, okay? So this is exactly what we're talking about right here. Purple Ness. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to copy this. So we're going to say 107. We're going to hit Control C. And we're going to paste it in to our our section here. So now we double click. We open it up. And of course we're going to have Purple Ness. But that's not our skin. So we're going to hit Control R. 
and we're going to go to recent places and close AV nest. And we're going to replace the battle portrait that we have. Uh, CL8 typically is it. Uh, you can use CMPR if you want to save size on something, whatever. But replace it, hit Control S, do it twice, that's fine. And there it is. So now we have 107. Uh, now, here's the thing, you don't want to use this number. We're going to try and rename this to the proper costume. And let me find it real quick. Okay. So now here's here's where you're going to get the number much easier. Once you understand the numbers of who is who, we're going to go... Let me find it, actually. Ness is 100. So now we're going to go back here. And this is where the numbers... It seems to get a little bit complicated, but it's pretty easy. Info 2 and info. Here's exactly where you're going to find everything you're going to need to know about. Uh, I think these might be stock icons, but let me find it real quick and scroll down. I think these are stock icons. And yeah. Okay, so this will work too. So 100, and we're going to go all the way down. And nope, that's the black one, the blue one, the green one. And that is exactly what we're looking for right there. 102. That's the number for the red and white nest. So that's what we are going to do. We're going to right click it. We're going to rename the file. And we're just going to change the number. That's all we're changing to 102. And there it is. So now we have the proper stock icon. Or the proper battle portrait, I should say. So now that was just to find the number. So now we're going to go to back to this portrait. And now it's as easy as Control C, copy your file, and paste. And there it is, 102. And if we refresh, we're going to be right in the exact perfect. Whoops. I've got. It's 11. My slot's up. I'm almost done. All right. Uh, is it? All right, yeah. I'm almost done. Uh, I know my slot's technically up, but we're just going to finish. So we're at 102. Awesome. Anyways, uh, 102, and there it is. We have the battle portrait. That'll be in the game. But we're going to make sure we replace everything how it should be. So once we have that replaced, we're going to go back to Info 2. And I believe we have that open. And we do. So stock icon, since it is 102, that's the number. All right. Hit Control R. Going to replace. And this is the stock icon. Once again, make sure you are replacing with the proper file, 32 by 32 as you can see there. And honestly, this is a very low quality format, CL8. Personally, uh, since there's not gonna be too many custom skins on like a PR build, you're gonna wanna change it to CL8. Much higher quality, looks really nice. And you can always get rid of these transparent areas if you wish, doesn't really matter too much. Uh, it's just quality sake, but it's really not noticeable on a tiny, tiny little square. So hit okay, there's the skin, and Looking around, let's see what's going on. There it is. So hit Control S, same thing. It's gonna save it, it's gonna compress it, do its thing, and we're good. So we have the stock icon in, info two is done. Next we go to menu, and we're gonna start off going to common, the stock face text. Open up textures, and we gotta go once again to 102, which is right here. Once again, we're gonna see the same icon and we're gonna replace and make that CL8 so it does not look ugly and there it is and same exact thing control S small file so it won't take long to load and now here I would recommend this is the way I would recommend finding the numbers so you don't have to scroll through hundreds of stock icons Ness is 100 okay click that open it up and you're gonna see it open up and here it is these are all the pictures you're gonna see every one of them for in the game all of them Kenny okay. and so right there that's the one we were in our place same thing control R and we're replacing that once again you'll see that number 120 by 160 there it is you can use C uh, CMPR that's the lowest rate CL8 is the higher quality I'd recommend it but if you're trying to save space or you don't really want to fill up all the different, uh, you know, you don't want to fill up your SD card as fast, or you just want to put the picture there, it doesn't have to be amazingly high quality, you can just click CMPR. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. It'll work just fine. 
I just prefer CL8 because you can tell it has much more definition. So hit Control S, save that, same exact process. And there we go. And now we're gonna go back to menu collection. Actually, you know what? No, never mind. That is the menu part. I don't know. I haven't done this in about a week or two. And that should be everything. Yeah. So in the common folder, as long as you change both of these, you are fine. Now we go to menu two. Uh, S SC cell character. Gonna open this up. Uh, car bus char bus text LZ something weird number just open it up gonna go to 10 which is Ness and control R replace it and once again this is the 128 by 160 the CSP we're gonna save it same thing I'm personally using CL8 you can use whatever you wish control save sometimes this one takes a couple extra seconds to do its thing but that's fine it works out Alright, and lastly, SC Cell Character 2. This is one of one, the second to last one, I believe. Actually, you know what? Scratch what I said. This is actually for, I believe, stage stuff so you, and menu stuff, so you don't really have to worry about this one yet. So, everything's fine. Don't worry about this one. You just have to worry about SC Cell Character. And very, very lastly, this is the very last step, guys, and then I'm going to be done. You're going to go to Stage, Melee, and then scroll all the way down. Scroll all the way down to Alright, we're gonna have Red Ranger versus Oats money matching for word for word two hundred dollars apparently on money and all the money all the money being uh, thrown around right now. You know, feeling like a gambler. But nonetheless, we are gonna be going to stage, melee, and then STG result. This one most people don't do, you don't really need to, but this is the very last one. This is to have it to where the icon is going to appear uh, at the stage select screen or the uh, results screen once the game is over. So you open it up, you're going to go to 2, go all the way down to 120, go to textures, and once again, 102 is the magic number for this costume. So you're going to click that, control R, and lastly, replace the stock. Once again, I personally like uh, CL8. CMPR is an, uh, a fine format, too. It works just fine. The quality, though, of CL8 is really high. I like that a lot. So it looks really nice in-game. And finally, we hit Control-S. And we can use this later. The skin is 100% done. Every single icon for it is in-game has been replaced. Everything is done. It's all in there. I hope you guys enjoyed my section. Uh, Conquer Ness. It's not 100% done. I will tell you that there are uh, there are some things that I want to, you know, patch up, fix, tweak, just a tad. But I hope that guy that uh, that explained everything for you guys. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, uh, stay tuned because there's still a lot more fun stuff to uh, to tune in for. Thank you all for tuning in. Don't be afraid to hit that donate button if you guys would love to support the balcony. I know I do. Being here is always always a pleasure. But uh, yeah, thank you to every single person in chat, and shout outs to Jose V for making PR. Here is his sort of done conquerness. But uh, yeah, I hope you all enjoyed. Uh, should I chill on the mic for a little bit? Okay. All right, but yeah, thank you all for tuning in. Stay tuned. There's plenty more to come, but that is Jose V's conquerness. Hope the tutorial helped you all out, and I will see you all later. What's up, fam? We're going to get a... Uh the party ready, right? We're going to set up the computer for that. It's a bit loud. Anyway, that was Psycho Ghost with a sick PR skin. We'll probably put this on during Alex's thing. Do we have another SD card that we can push stuff on? Because we could just, like, quickly switch them out. But anyway, because I have the most recent Balco on here. Yeah, I, I, I copied it this morning. We just, and I, we just need to put, like, mess on Okay, well, I'll have you do that. You can, like, just show how you do that, I guess. I'm sure. I don't know if people can. But um, I'm going to set this up. So you need... I'm going to let you, like, download Audacity yourself. I'm just going to try to set it up so that this, the audio right now is for you. So right now we have uh, a little bit of an hour in between. 
um, where the party is going to be showing how to do sound loops and uh, changing like CSS images. And then uh, after that, we're going to be having the comment, the first commentary, uh, go live. Mm -mm. With our friends, do some waterfalls, oats, and Maddox. Should be Did that work? Is it cheap? Oh, that's giving me the. All right. Mm -mm. Okay. Oh, that's fun. You okay? Whoever's doing that sucks. <laughs> All right, we're gonna turn that down, and we're gonna turn. Okay. Mm -mm. Oh yeah, enjoy my uh, Earthbound background. I didn't draw this, so don't ask if I drew this. Um, I'm gonna set it up so that the audio is from the computer. Sorry guys, gonna have a little bit of a transition here while I get stuff ready. Mm -mm. I'm gonna see if I can fix the browser from like being shitty. Is it working now? No, it's not. All right, I might reset the router real quick. Mm mm, because it's being jank. Yo, Alex, uh, can you reset the just unplug? Wait five seconds and then replug in the router. All right, fam, we're gonna just reset because for some reason we can still stream, but we're not getting browser stuff, so we're just gonna reset real quick and we'll be back in like probably a couple seconds. Mm mm, and then we can get the loops going. Give it a loop. Give it a loop. Loop it. Loop it. Uh uh, and let me know when you've done that. <coughs> you did it? All right. It's setting its butt back up. And if people could let me know when we are visible. <coughs> oh, are we good? Should be good. <coughs> Sorry, kind of sick. Gonna reload this browser? We still aren't getting browser. If people can see us, let me know. Hmm. What is this? Mm -mm. If we are back, well, people could let me know. Mm. It's not the browser. I don't know what it is. Uh, mom, yeah, I don't know. Second, so I'm gonna fix a lot of shit. <laughs> 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 I don't know what to do now. Nothing's working. 